there, Pokemon trainers. I'm Ash. I'm Nick. And we're here joined by two of our friends, also from our local community, uh, Evan Moore and Derek Wismer. Uh, they just got, well, not just got out of Peoria, but they went to Peoria, uh, got to play in it. I don't yeah, know. We got, we, got, we got some questions for you. Yeah. Uh, forward to it. Yeah. No, first and foremost, uh, for Derek, how the fuck did you get five draws? <laughs> <laughs> They're bad players. He sucks. All right. Uh, also, for everyone watching home, this is one of the uh, not child friendly episodes. <laughs> I mean, we never market child friendly, so. Uh, we, we, we pretend. <laughs> yeah, we like to pretend. <laughs> Anyways, uh, why don't you guys break out on your experience first and foremost? Like, how was it? Just. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, it was my first event, like, big event ever. Uh, it was a ton of fun. Like, I kept telling all my opponents, like, I feel like I'm in love. Like,. I'd never experienced anything like that. I mean, you got pros to your left and right, and it's just, it's it's unlike anything I've ever experienced. And it's a ton of fun. I mean, it's a day full of Pokemon. So, I mean, can't go wrong there. Yeah, uh, I, I got to agree with him. Uh, big, first big event for Pokemon. Uh, I've played other card games and large events. Um, the Pokemon community is super fun, super friendly. Uh, the experience overall was fantastic between the vendors, the event organizers, and the judges. I, I couldn't complain a bit, honestly. It was just a, a good experience all around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know you've done Warhammer events, and I know you've done Magic events. How did the like tournaments compare? Oh, my. And... <laughs> I, I was making fun of them because they're like, like, oh, I'm tired, you know, I got to go sit in the hotel room, been up all day. It's like, dude, we've been sitting playing Pokemon. It's like, I'm used to Warhammer where you're, like, doing stuff, you know? It's, I could have done two events in a day. I mean, it was. So, so the power of youth versus uh, Derek's old old man. Okay, well, that, <laughs> that might be. That's not fair. That might be it, too. The week. That, that's not acceptable. Uh, but, no, uh, come Really similar uh, in a lot of ways to Magic events. Um, just a lot of people, a lot of shuffling around. Uh, but uh, it just felt, I don't know, a lot more lax. There's not the pressure uh, that Magic kind of brings with mm -hmm. it of being a very consistently competitive card game where Pokemon, even at its highest competitive level, doesn't feel like it takes itself to a, a level of seriousness that isn't fun anymore. Uh, you still have excitement. You still have really really big decisions, big plays, but you don't run into just this kind of, do I do I look like I'm clueless if something goes wrong? Mm -hmm. Everyone's kind of aware that there's there's variance in the game, and that's just how it goes. Yeah, speaking of variance, uh, I know you were playing uh, Gudra, you were playing your uh, Palkia. Palkia deck, right? Palkia Ice Rider. Uh, did you guys see, I'm, I'm assuming you saw a lot of the meta decks, I'm assuming Muse, Regis, uh, Palkias as well. Did you see anything, like, out of the norm where you're just like, that's <laughs> new, but that is really cool? Well, I mean, I hit a Hisuian Arcanine. That was pretty <laughs> dumb. <laughs> that was, I got a tie there. It was just slow. But it was fun. Uh, and then I saw a, a Gudra list that was running Flying Pikachu, hmm. which was weird, but it worked. I mean, I drew there, too, but he beat me because of the Pikachu. So yeah. I mean, yep. Uh, I ran into two interesting ones. Uh, one of them I had heard online talk of. Uh, it's the Greedent VMAX with the cleansing gloves. Uh, their whole purpose is to take three prizes from KOing a comp uh, and then echoing horning and bossing up a comp again and taking <laughs> another three prizes, which is exactly what they did to me game one. Uh, <laughs> luckily, I just scooped all of my confes into my hand during the second game and just didn't let them, and it turned out to be a draw after finishing that one off. Um, and then I ran into a coin flip Wailord V deck. What? It was super bizarre. He was not happy when he found out that I couldn't be KO'd with three heads uh, playing Gutra after I attacked, but it was it was bizarre. It ran the... Uh, the basic Cramorant that used the uh, dive that does 20 damage and on heads can't be damaged or it with effects. It was bizarre. It was super fun, but it was it was something else. <laughs> uh, that one that was a win. So that was 
maybe maybe a little untuned. Mm-hmm. It was it was a very fun deck. Now, uh, are there any changes you wish you made to your deck at all? Uh, it, if you <laughs> yeah, knew yeah. that the <laughs> yep. event was going to be the way it was, would you have changed them at all? Anything like that? Yeah, I would have uh, just unsleeved it and played uh, Zorark. Zorark, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the deck was fine. I, I honestly wouldn't change a thing. It was just my matchups. I just had a rough tournament. I didn't hit the matchups that I wanted to hit. Mm-hmm. Hit a few single prizes, which suck when you're playing a VMAX because the prize trade's uneven. They're going to two-shot you, and you, you know, you're, they're taking three where you're taking two. So it's mm-hmm. just, it is what it is. <laughs> the deck is great, though. I, I'd take it again if the event was this weekend. So, I, uh, I will say uh, I played the the Lost Engine with Gudra, um, and to say it feels slow given how fast that engine is is weird. Um, but I, I think the the Arceus build is a better build for Gudra, and having known that prior to the event, I would have definitely gone with that version. Mm-hmm. Um, I also had weird matchups. Uh, I saw Kiram and Giratina. I think, like, th- those two decks. Separate. Oh, I was going to say together. together. Yeah, together. Well, that would be yeah. insane. Uh, I saw both of those, I think, a combined five out of my nine rounds. Uh, both of those are rough matchups for the Lost Engine Gudra deck, uh, just because... They, they don't care how much damage you reduce. They're going to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I, I also missed some of the matchups I wanted. I was hoping for any of the single prizers were more of a, a pretty much a, a free win. If you, mm-hmm. You're one-shotting them. They, they aren't taking KOs in return at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was honestly hoping to see Mew more. I know everyone around me was seeing Mew, and I, I never did pretty favorable matchup so <laughs> matchups aside yeah. i i think it was the wrong build of the right deck but it was it was still a fantastic deck to play it's yeah. uh it is a little slower too time wise with the lost engine so that's definitely a, a big part of it yeah i know with uh gudra specifically we saw some matches where they were using uh zashian or samazen to be uh, Zashian yeah. to just help get that uh, steel energy out. Zamazenta just to stop V maxes in case, just in case. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. it was really interesting to see some of the acceleration setups that people had, um, like that or the the one against Rosa. Much faster. Um, I don't know if their resilience or flexibility, uh, how that compares. Obviously, I didn't test those. But mm-hmm. They they were fast and they they set up a lot quicker. So I I think something. Like the better play mm-hmm. for Gudra at least. And then I know there's been a lot of debate with Palkia because it's do I play Palkia with Ice Rider? Do I play it with Q Rim? Like, what do you think is the optimal build with Q Rim? See, I haven't played that much Q Rim and I actually didn't hit a single one. Oh, right. My You're still playing tournament. Palkia. Yeah. You're, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Palkia, Ice Rider, though. Um, I don't know. I didn't play Q Rim. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honest, I, 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 I got it backwards. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah i i don't know i i got molly wonk by Kiram. i mean like it was never once a a fun matchup uh ice rider i i would have loved to seen an ice rider because i know that's just not a an instant ko where Kiram, it's like oh they they gotta get five energies mm-hmm. but they're gonna get five energies mm-hmm. uh, that was and, and it just it's got as much hp Oh, yeah. Now, um, like, this being both your guys' first tournaments, uh, do you guys have any, you know, suggestions for maybe getting prepared for people people that are getting prepared for yeah, the next right. tournament or perhaps are looking into tournament play? Any ways for them to start getting started with the, those types of things? I would just say practice with a time limit. Yes. <laughs> that was the biggest thing. Absolutely. That was honestly the biggest thing is playing with a time limit because it's the same game. You're just playing it for... 10 hours Mm -hmm. you know it's it's the same thing you're used to just practice your matchups what you think is going to be there and if you think you're going to lose scoop (laughs) go to game two (laughs) because the time is it goes by a lot faster than you think it would especially when you're doing like 5 10 15 things in just one turn like 
literally we were we just got done playing in our league i was just like uh nick was playing me i was just like okay i'm gonna come back in an hour when you're done doing your stuff like yeah. it just uh, pokemon just has the opportunity to just do a lot of things in just one turn i do enjoy drawing like 21 cards a turn it's very fun <laughs> all, of all of the cards yeah. in one turn I, yeah I'd, I'd prefer to draw all the cards instead of just 21 cards but i'll settle for 21 cards in one turn <laughs> I definitely think that's something to note is there, there's so much chaining that happens in Pokemon that playing with a timer or even running a solo hand with a timer going to see how mm -hmm. fast you're doing that, essentially running sprints with cards, mm -hmm. it's it, it's definitely something I would recommend. Uh, that and look, play online and practice. It, it seems silly. You're going to run into ladder decks that are gimmicky or just funny, but play online. You're, you're going to see what people are practicing a lot, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. a week leading up or so to a big event. It, it'll help way yeah. more than you think. Yeah. Just sort of something that uh, in your playtesting, were there any decks that are like, man, I wish I'd playtested against that, or like, wow, I wish I didn't playtest that because I never saw this deck at all during... Uh, the Kyurem, for sure, mm -hmm. is a deck I wish I would have playtested into more. Uh, I went into it knowing that something like Giratina is going to be a Giratina deck, and mm -hmm. it's going to do what it does, mm -hmm. but... I, I would say the limited testing I had against a Kyurem Palkia ability uh, was probably a pretty big disadvantage going into it. Just not realizing, hey, this this engine is strong. It is going to be better. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I, I don't think there was too much testing that was going in the poor direction at least. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah, I agree. I just agree with everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. I mean, <laughs> Straight up. Feels so good. Sometimes it's just a matter of just making sure you're getting your, you know, the you're remembering your repetition correctly. Like, I do this, then this, then this. Yep. And that order typically doesn't change between hands, no matter how what different hand mm -hmm. you have. Just remembering those sort of patterns mm -hmm. is always really nice. Those lines and outs are, are huge to have down if you are playing a single hand. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very helpful. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I mean, uh, time aside, because I know that was like the big complaint that we've, oh, yeah. <laughs> we've been talking about. Cool. What is something that you you guys kind of saw that other people struggled with? Was was it uh, outside of time again? Was it like they were still learning their decks? Was it a matter of they just hadn't practiced enough? Like Most of my opponents seem like they had also practiced pretty well. Uh, I did have a couple that were like running ETB sleeves and like they were very clearly newer players mm -hmm. uh, and they were struggling with it. But it, I mean, for the most part, everybody there knew what they were doing. Like yeah. it was, it was just like clean Pokemon. Mm -hmm. just two people who know what's up, sit down, run your matches. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like, at least for regionals, you kind of have to have an idea of what you're doing. You don't want to yeah. throw down the entry fee just to get, you know, yeah, Molly I mean, for, for a full day. I yeah. mean, yeah. when I when I did regionals for uh, v, the VG side of things back in, what, Sun Moon era? <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, no, it was XY era. Anyways, um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a lot different, and I just knew at the time, like, our entire Pokemon club was going, so I was just like, yeah, I'll go. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm bringing Stoutland. <laughs> <laughs> and I brought Stoutland to regionals with me with the one goal of if I could uh, get parental bond on Mega Mad at, that's all I wanted to pull off. And I pulled it off the one time, so I was like, I don't care. I won two games. I did the stupid combo I wanted to do. I'm happy. <laughs> Not that goal. That's what matters. <laughs> I, I don't think I ran into anyone that didn't particularly prepare enough or know their, know their deck well enough. Um, some of the math and interactions definitely wasn't uh, prepared for, especially mm -hmm. playing Gujar. Mm -hmm. The deck makes math hard. It, yeah. It really yeah. does. Um, and there was a lot of time where I would just tell people, you're hitting me for Mm -hmm. because it would take up so much of their turn of them, especially with, like, the Kyurem deck, them counting energy and balance, just, look, five. You get five, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. That's, and that, that definitely seemed to be a thing. Uh, I don't think it's a very prevalent problem in most regional play, mm -hmm. or even the current mm -hmm. one. Just Gudra makes things weird. Yeah, yeah. Gudra is a deck that 
does have some popularity behind it. But yeah, yeah I no, can understand why. It just yeah. makes everything weird. It's insane. <laughs> I love it. In our limited playtest, all right, so you're taking 200 less this turn, and I'm attacking you for 200. And, oh, like, oh, fuck, I just do 10 damage, okay. Um, excuse me, it was 240 less. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you're right, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and yeah, don't play that yeah. version of the deck. It's slow, and it does <laughs> not win enough. It, it, it is funny, though. Yeah, it, I can imagine a lot of frustration from your opponents. Just like, all right, I guess I'm just going to pass this turn, because... <laughs> yeah, there, there was <laughs> genuinely turns where they just... No, nah, I'm gonna pass. Uh, yeah. Like you're not gonna hit me for anything. Mm-hmm. They're like, nope, yeah. just gonna pass. I was like, something? okay, and it just it it was a very interesting interaction to be on one side of. Mm-hmm. Like, like if I was if I was in that wheelhouse, I feel like I would still be trying to layer that damage on just in case. If you didn't mm-hmm. have like the higher proportion mm-hmm. or Cheryl or mm-hmm. whatever you you were you were using to heal the damage. Yeah, and realistically, if you put eighty damage on Deidre, even even seventy. They have to V-Star, pretty much, mm-hmm. because they can't guarantee that they're not going to get KO'd on the next turn. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's definitely a thing that a lot of people didn't consider in that matchup, which is fair. But yeah, it just seemed like there's a lot of not attacks that could have made a match more favorable for both. Mm-hmm. Now, sort of a fun one that I know... Uh, gets this one in particular are there any decks or cards in particular that you don't like slash hope to see rotate out (laughs) or all will be happy when they rotate out soon i'm mostly saying this one because the uh, fucking inteleon engine (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, i i don't think there's anyone playing right now that's like no it should stay for another cycle reprint it yeah Mm -hmm. that'd be good Mm -hmm. yeah no we (laughs) we can get rid of it yeah it's and, just played out. Yeah, I just know you're tired of Arceus, too. Like, Arceus is, a, like, I'm going to say a symptom of the Inteleon problem. <laughs> like, Arceus is good, but it's just sitting there watching Inteleon go, oh, they're just going to get everything they need, and then the Arceus gets the remaining two things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, like, Arceus is good, but it's a one time, like, okay, sure. Fucking so watching my opponent go, all right, uh, you know, Drizzle, sure, Inteleon, sure, up, scoop up, do it all. I'm like, please... I, well, can, can you not play eight Melanies in five turns? <laughs> <laughs> I say also scoop up nets rotating too. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's going to make the lost engine a little more it's weird. Gonna like how is that going to work? You know? yeah. It's going to, it's going to do that. And it's also going to do a hefty punch against like Reggie's because yeah. Reggie's kind of need those scoop oh, up nets to be able prizers, to, yeah. to yeah. swap those cards around. Just, yeah. I just took big SL against uh soul rock. New tone where he asked, scoop ups again where it's like pick it up put it back down pick i'm like yep yeah hmm, good yeah suddenly i'm much more excited for this rotation Mm -hmm. and then of course marnie's getting rotated but Uh, i think you guys probably you guys have probably seen taken over compared Mm -hmm. to marnie i am so sick of rock i thought i was tired of marnie i am sick of (laughs) roxanne oh my goodness and she was just printed in brilliant stars Mm -hmm. we still have two years of it can't have that one be the answer because it's okay, they'll just give us a reset stamp back. Oh god, no! <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Yeah. We are on. not going back to the reset stamp at stage. If, it, honestly, I think the card I'm most excited for any amount of rotation on is anything in the Palkia. That the water is so consistent right now that it is absurd, and Bucket being gone is going to be a small blessing. Oh shoot! Capri- Bucket is rotating. Bucket is it? rotating. Yeah. That was a debate on the car ride, either there or back. I'm. S- it's just another thing to hit that specific typing that is so incredibly. Uh, it's it's tight. It, it doesn't have any problems being consistent. Mm-hmm. I think Evo Incense and Quick Ball also rotate soon. Yeah. I think Quick Ball is. Can't remember no. if Quick Ball got its. Quick Bot, a ball technically got a reprint, but it didn't have the legality marker updated. Okay. To, because it was reprinted in Fusion Strike, but it's still the uh, D marker. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that'll. I think those things being gone as a whole, just the the consistency package is mm-hmm. going to be. Uh, it's going to be nice. Just slow games down a bit, but not make, but in a way that a turn isn't going to take fifteen minutes to do the same thing mm-hmm. <laughs> now you're gonna have quicker turns but the game pace 
to slow down a bit. Uh, I think that'll help a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know uh, Boss's Order, way, uh, originally it was going to be rotating out, mm-hmm. then it got the reprint and the mar- marker update, yep. so I... that's staying in for a while, but I don't think, I mean, it's had a huge impact on the meta, don't get me wrong, but it's not necessarily a bad impact, in my opinion, at least. It becomes more strategic, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I, I don't know about you for the event, but there's a lot of times where I, I was like, man, I have to play around boss now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I think, I don't know. To be honest, <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, I'm glad boss isn't rotating, though, because there's always a gust, in, like, in any format, like, whether it's catchers or, like, goo. Mm-hmm. anything like that so I, I think it's healthy to have gust but i don't think it's super impactful like mm-hmm. either because there are other mm-hmm. options like you have escape rope you don't get to pick but that'll get something else into the active you've got your uh cross switchers and i mean gust is good <laughs> gust is <Yeah>. good <laughs> yeah i i played a, a lot of the the pantheon vms that kind of wanted to get it back into the and I found mm-hmm. something like boss kind of gave me a, a strange dynamic where it wasn't I'm bossing something up for a KO, where it was I'm bossing something so I can start splitting my damage because I'm pulling something that's already damaged out of the active mm-hmm. and pushing it back to the bench. Uh, so I, I think with some certain builds or decks or cards, you kind of get that unique little interaction with it as well. Where it's less of a, less of a okay, I can take this KO. Uh, you're not safe on your bench, and more of a, a very dynamic play style of setup and tempo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it also feels like stuff like re- like research bosses is kind of like a constant necessary, to where it, it also boss punishes greed as well. Where if you want to get your opponent like overextending on their bench, you go, oh, cool, thanks. Yep, mm-hmm. yeah. especially like, with I, things like the Luminion and Corvette V mm-hmm. that are just prime targets right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I've been a victim of that more than once. Oh, just, man. oh, I'm going to boss up your Crobat. Cool. Yep. Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't have a Volo. Uh, okay, I guess you're just going to take that KO. I got nothing. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, at worst, it's yeah. stuck there for a little bit. Well, at best, yeah. it's stuck there. Yeah. At worst, you're going to lose two prizes, and then you're just that much farther behind. Mm-hmm. Or they've even the playing field. Either yeah. or. Now, we've talked a lot about, like, present meta and stuff like that. What do you guys think is going to be coming with the future meta? We know, I mean, Lost Origin is here today. Giratina is going to be a pretty hefty box. Uh, I know Lost Toolbox was the one that ended up winning, but we also literally just talked about how it's going to get tam- dampened because of the, the scoop, up under, scoop Up Net being taken out. <laughs> do you think uh, Silver Tempest is going to bring anything new to the meta or just any hopes for like something to come to the meta i i have a very personal uh oh. hope and love for uh dark IV star to be a little more of a consistent <laughs> turbo deck it is probably a false hope and it is probably uh a little in vain but i will say uh, i think with the new ho uh just having something that attaches that much energy from your discard to itself mm-hmm. uh, that deck will be sweet and I think the G Drago V Star is going to be a really fun deck too. Whenever we get to play around with that. Oh boy, I can't wait to run into like Oops All Reggie V. Ooh. Oh, see, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. sitting here like, I'm just looking at the unknown V Star myself. Like, I know somebody's going to be running <laughs> that. What is coming so out of awesome. this? I I can't wait to see that thing. I have done zero research <laughs> into the future, so I am <laughs> useless in this conversation. But. I do know the Reggie Drago. I think that'll be cool because it's kind of mm-hmm. it kind of reminds me of the Mewtwo V or uh, the Mewtwo and Mew GX, uh, where it could copy attacks yeah. from mm-hmm. the discard pile. So I think it's gonna be fun. I don't know how impactful it'll be, but yeah, but I, that's mm-hmm. the only thing I know about so far. I, so. I think outside of my uh, my grasping at straws for this funny dark type deck, I I think other than just really fun things i don't have anything that i'm really landing on as being a at least a new top tier mm-hmm. of anything um Yu-Gi-Oh might be something it might not be 
it's hard to tell. Lugia is on the fence for me because it's like, it's, on paper, its ability sounds really good, but it's the fact that it can only pick non-Vs, non-Rollbox Pokemon. Yeah. It suddenly just hampers what you can pull out of your discard. Uh, It feels like something that's going to be very dependent on what's around it to really function. Uh, I will say it's pretty cool that you can get Ultra Barrel. Yeah, and, that, that was literally where yeah. my thought just went. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, or the was it the Archaeops Arch- that's coming out. Mm-hmm. That's going to be really fun being able to go and play around with your special energies, even though we're losing a bunch of them in the near future. But I, I think there's something there. Uh, I feel like it's probably leaning into something to come, but until then. Yeah, I'm, I I think you're right in that regard. I think uh, especially with how energy dependent, I guess, would be the best way to put it, uh, some of these cards are, again, Ar- I know Archaeops plays, if I remember correctly, it pl- I mean, it does play with the special energy. Uh, Ho-Oh grabs any energy. Uh, I know there were a few other cards that I can't remember off the top of my head yeah. that were just going off of different energy types, and it seems like we're going, I don't know how to put it. Not quite like Dragon Build, where you're you're having to play like three yeah. different energy types for one Pokemon, but it seems like we're going in a way where we'll be seeing more than one type per deck, essentially. I, I think that definitely comes from the meta leading into, I would say, the pre-Brilliant Stars, where a lot of decks were running these incredibly low energy counts, where some were running seven or eight Mm-hmm. At, and that was the more energy intensive builds of things. It just feels like now they kind of want to make it, hey, you're running less of a lean build. You actually have things to kind of work with. Mm-hmm. So I, I like the direction it looks like it's going at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got anything? Uh, no, most of my questions have been answered either. Uh, <laughs> Most of them, because I do remember Dexter had talked about how uh, he had played in a, G- a GLC side event against, I believe, it was Trainer Chip. He said, "Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, he which, was yeah. uh, Chip mm-hmm. is one of the the like main broadcasters." Yeah. but yeah. When I was like, Joe, did either of you run into anyone that you're like, oh my god, little starstruck or that's that's all. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> all where, where he uh, hasn't looked ahead, yeah. I have done very little watching online of stuff. So. Yeah, so uh, stop Mahone in between rounds. I don't know, <laughs> round two or round three, and. Uh, had him sign a Zapdos, a team up Zapdos, the pre release promo for my GLC deck. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to play it. Like, everybody's like, oh, oh. you got to put that up. You got to double sleeve it. And I'm like, no, I'm going to nah. play it mm-hmm. because that's cool. Uh, ran into Real Breaking Nate and his wife, mm-hmm. uh, had them sign a couple of cards. They were super cool. Everybody was super cool. Like, no matter who. Uh, JW Crewall, I actually stopped and talked to him. It was just me and him standing there. Talked for like five minutes and. It's just cool. Like, all the pros, I mean, they're mm-hmm. just normal people. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They're just really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So hopefully you don't meet them across the table. But uh, <laughs> Or if you do meet them across the table, maybe you can at least beat them. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then I'll just a bunch of other pros I saw, like, I'd point them out when we were, like, in passing, mm-hmm. but didn't talk to any of them because it's just like, oh, hey, that's cool to see mm-hmm. you. Like, hey, that dude was top eight in Worlds, you know? Like, oh, boy, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Um, it was cool. The pros getting to meet everybody. Mm-hmm. It was just cool. Yeah. Which, which slightly uh, on that because I just did mention Dexter, who's unfortunately uh, under the weather, so he couldn't make today. Mm-hmm. Uh, top two fifty six for him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what was he? It was six one two. Oh no, five two two. Five two two. Five two two. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. he was this close to mm-hmm. day two. Um, mm-hmm. Like he's. He's been, like, one of the top players in our area for a while. Like, he's always been doing regionals and everything. Mm -hmm. So, I think, I know he's been excited just to see the community come back again Mm -hmm. uh, and just being able to go out Mm -hmm. to these things again, except, unfortunately, got sick from it, but... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, yeah, and honestly, huge, Mm -hmm. huge thanks to him. I, I wouldn't have been anywhere near as prepared for the experience if... We didn't have him with us and mm-hmm. helping us kind of get the, the play testing yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Prepared to go one, four, and four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah, he was a big help. He was, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. 
because he knows what he's doing. So yeah. like, no matter what deck he's playing, when you're sitting across from him, he's he's gonna play it. Like yeah. you know, yeah. so it's it's valuable testing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then also like, if you make a play, he'll go on later and explain to you like, oh maybe you shouldn't maybe you should have tried this first. You know, mm -hmm. like helping with sequencing and stuff. So yeah. it, he's he's a great tool to have around. And like yeah. not he, just a tool. He's you know it. You know. Yeah. He's yeah. he's a phenomenal player, and he's just kind of like just. Good. Like great in every sense yeah. because yeah. you can go, hey, I have this deck. What is something I can do to make it better? Or hey, there's something I'm not doing something right. Can you help me figure this out? Things of that sort. Like mm -hmm. just, I, yeah. Yeah. even when I get stumped on judge questions, I'll just be like, hey, Dexter, what's your take on this? Mm -hmm. He's yeah. like, Dexter, if you're watching this, like you're you're phenomenal. Yeah. We love you, dude, <laughs> and we hope you all feel better. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it was it was definitely a huge help to have someone <laughs> with just that much game knowledge and experience. Uh, I there was a point in playtesting where he was essentially playing my deck for me with yeah. the first thing I tested, <laughs> and it blew my mind that he was like, you should try this and this, and then that should lead you to this, and it did every time. I, it was it was incredible to see, and I it definitely helped. Mm -hmm. Regardless of five ties or otherwise, <laughs> uh, it helped. Like, I have speed... How many of those five ties were like if you had one or two more turns, you would have had it? At least probably three of them. I I mean, it really, two of them ended at time. I mean, it was game two ends, they call time. All right, that's it. Mm -hmm. But the others, it was if I had one more turn, two more turns, it was locked down. Um, one of them was iffy just because it, it came down to bad pricing on both sides. But overall, it, it definitely felt like one or two more turns, maybe even just a 10-minute difference in time would have been a game win or loss for either side. So. Uh, I just happened to think of this one. This will, this will probably be the last question, but it's kind of a, more of a silly one. Is there any like utility Pokemon or cards that you saw somebody play and be like, I'm going to start putting that in my decks. Just the staples, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody, at least none of the people I played were very, like, innovative. It was more just like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was more just like, oh, this is... The straight know. cut meta, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. There, there is one thing. I only found about, out about it just today. Um, the Shadow Rider deck that was floating around that was running the V2 V-Star. Mm -hmm. um, they're running Skate Park in it. Which I could not believe anyone was playing. That's I, that's actually ingenious. I know I couldn't believe it. Um, I I believe it was someone from the willpower uh, team. I, I believe they were running that build, and it was it blew my mind. I forgot that was a card. Even it was mm -hmm. so cool. Say I don't even know what it does. It, <laughs> uh, you put the when you when your Pokemon retreats, you put the energy back to your hand rather than discard. Oh. And then your underworld doing it right back onto stuff and mm -hmm. getting more value. It so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's definitely a, one of the things where you'd go skater park over like uh training court. Yeah, yeah, I might I might have to switch up my my stadium build. I didn't even think about that until I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was like I never once considered that to be a card. Mm -hmm. Anyone would play at that level. And yeah, and I think training court's so prevalent if you kinda want it but don't need it, you're going to see it anyway. So it seems like a pretty good include. Wait, mm -hmm. though, actually, I think it's getting... That one's rotating out, too, isn't it? I hope so. I would like to see it gone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's on? Training court? Training court, Training yeah. court does, yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're definitely seeing a lot of changes, like, just uh, staple-wise in the meta. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, we have, we're going to be going into Scarlet Violet with all new Pokemon, all new so cards. Excited. We're going back to yeah, lowercase so. EX, not uppercase EX. Like, thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> no more uppercase EX. It got a little too crazy. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see what comes out of this because there's definitely something else up their sleeves with how they've been giving information slash mm -hmm. how they've been presenting it. So. I don't know. Any yeah. like closing comments or anything, guys? Yeah, I beat two Mews. 
Other than that, no. Yeah. Um, Very good. I saw zero Mews, so yeah. I didn't get to beat any mm -hmm. or lose to him. So didn't lose to Mew. Yep. As soon That's as we turn the cameras off, I think uh, Nick is going to have a very uh, intense conversation with Evan about yeah, beating I can you. So. Oh no, real fast. No, not at all. No, I was going to say. Fast. No, I was going to say for Derek. I was like, honestly, I think Mew probably was one of your favorite matchups. Oh man, I wanted that matchup so bad. I, I it was everywhere. It was <laughs> at all the tables when people were playtesting, and then everyone just sided decided they were gonna box up Mew and not play it against me apparently it, it was literally you had like a Mew repellent on you oh, it's just like and we're gonna pair you against this person 10 just... hours <laughs> zero Mews five ties that's how it goes I guess <laughs> see the, th the problem was all the Mews were at the top tables uh, so okay. that's why we didn't see them. that is <laughs> no. correct I don't think any of them made a top 8 because I thought it was no, like no but they no. were up and they, they were doing better than me I, don't know <laughs> I, I, right, right, right. I think the highest they got was I might, there might have been one like a top 16 but they definitely didn't make top 8 again which mm -hmm. I don't yeah I, I know some of the top players did make it to top 8 but it's like I know uh, Azul is there and a few other like big names like you guys were talking about uh, Zach Zach Lesage was there and none of them made it to top eight, which I was mm -hmm. just sitting there like. Yeah, quit. Speaking like, of, uh, unreal. why is that every time I tuned in to watch the stream, there was just Bibberell spam constantly? I don't know why. Like, it, it, no, it would be like, I'd, I'd be like, it'd be like a Lost Box and like, I don't know, a Mew deck playing. And there's just a chat full of Bidoof. Like, what is going on? Yeah, <laughs> because it was the world champions words. Play, play Bibberell. Yeah. Yeah. This was day one. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They're still following the words. Okay, of the I got world it. Champion, okay, which I got is it. Play what Bibberol. Is good. They, okay, they've been informed. I, I guess I will have to start researching the Church of Bidoof. <laughs> <laughs> there is one. There is one. Yeah, I, I'm unfortunately aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and close it yep. out from here. Uh, Derek and Evan, thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us. Of course, yeah, yeah uh, thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's been it's been fun talking to you guys. Of yep. course, we always talk during league, but still. Mm -hmm. um, right. Hopefully, we'll be able to get to uh, the next regional with you. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that'd yeah. be fun. Dude, I got I got third row seating, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rolling three deep. Man. But yeah, I'm Ash. I'm Nick. I'm this Evan. Derek. And we will catch you next time. <laughs>